For more, let me turn to Bill Crane, a political analyst and commentator, when he joins me from my home state of Georgia. Bill, welcome to the program. Well, how much of a concern or threats, intimidation, violence where you are in Georgia? I mean, we saw what happened two years ago. And of course, Georgia is holding a race that could change the balance of power in the Senate. We are in our second week of early voting. We are breaking records in every category and demographic in terms of turnout and participation. In Georgia, we have three weeks of early voting, advanced voting without excuse, the absentee ballot, drop boxes at the early voting sites. And basically, we expect a, a, for a midterm, a record turnout of somewhere north of between four and five million voters of seven and a half million registered voters in Georgia. And we are at about 95 percent in terms of eligible population registered. I, I don't mean to be dismissive of the threats, but I don't think that's going to stop people from showing up at the polls or showing up to vote early. Are, are things being done to protect polling stations, voters, election workers? Well, yes, but there are not. I mean, on Election Day in Georgia, we'll have almost 2,700 precincts in 159 counties and probably two and a half to three million people voting on that day. So you can't be everywhere at once. But I would say to those folks who are considering taking violent action, um, police and, and uh, sheriff personnel in all of those counties are on warning that it's an election day. One of the reasons we moved out of schools as primary location for polling sites was the threat of violence to schools, which preceded these discussions about attacking polling sites. I, again, don't believe that the threat is really credible, but even if it was, that it would significantly alter or change turnout patterns. Um, and I would point out uh, that you can't predict what crazy people on either side of the political divide will do. But I believe most people respect each and every voter's right to express their preference in the polling place and won't violate that. I think part of the problem, Bill, is that two years after the January 6th insurrection, there are people to this day who believe election lies, that the voting was stolen, that the election was a fraud, and President Biden is an illegitimate president. And the question is, how much damage can this do to the midterms, really underlining, or I should say undermining, the entire electoral process? It is not helpful when either political party or its leaders attack and undermine the credibility and the integrity of balloting and voting. And I would remind your viewers and listeners that we've had attacks on the Democratic side going back to the 2018 election here, saying that that contest was stolen, though that was more about allegations of voter suppression. We had a, a relatively significant federal court decision about 10 days ago, Fair Fight Georgia being the litigant, challenging a number of aspects of Georgia's voting law. And the judge, who was appointed by Barack Obama in a 288-page decision, basically said the burden on voters is low, Georgia's ballots are secure, and the election contest of 2020 wasn't stolen. So either side undermining that basic core principle of your right as a, vote, as a constitutional citizen in the United States to cast your ballot um, is not helpful to the process. But it doesn't appear to be causing people to not participate or not to vote. We, again, have set a record again in registration for a non-presidential election year, and our a million and a quarter early votes have already been cast, with the expectation of the vote count total being between four and a half and five million votes on election day. Americans, as you know, are more divided now than ever before. What do you think it is, Bill? Uh, is it disinformation? Is it conspiracy theories? social media. I mean, I'm talking about division on everything, social is issues, abortion rights, race, gender, economy, even vaccines. I think if you look at the world through the lens of social media, that you could agree that it, perhaps the United States is divided than it ever has been. I wasn't here for the Civil War, but I would argue that it's more the leadership of the political parties and activists and extremists in either extreme side of either political party that are divided. Most Americans I go and meet, run into at the grocery store, see pumping gas and upset about gasoline prices, they don't feel that the nation is nationally, naturally divided, but they do wonder when they're looking at, in Georgia, somewhere close to a quarter of a billion dollars of ads that have been running since midsummer. Why are the candidates only talking about bad things about the other 
candidates. Why aren't the candidates telling us what they intend to do, how they intend to lead, how they intend to solve the problems facing America? And those negative ads are effective. They wouldn't keep running them if they weren't. But in part, what they do is cause people to be disgusted with the process and stay at home. All right. Bill Crane from Decatur, Georgia. Thank you.